Good afternoon, Madam Speaker. Good afternoon, sir. So in contemplating my remarks on this constitutional amendment this morning, I was thinking about how often I've influenced votes here in this chamber in my many years. And I can honestly say probably very few, unfortunately. But I've spoken with passion, I've tried to speak with reason, and I've tried to convince people why sometimes I do make sense, despite what my wife may say at home about my comments and thoughts. <clears throat> and Mr. Speaker. But today, truly, I would ask that my friends on the other side of the aisle take a look at the, quote, lockbox, what I, what, what I would say is rather a leaky box, as I used Charlie previously. And look at lines 41 to 42. Basically, the sources of the funds deposited in the transportation fund shall be deposited in said fund so long as such sources are authorized by statute to be collected or received by the state. The original proposed resolution, by definition, has in it language that says it can be changed by us by a simple vote. That is not a lockbox. When I became ranking member of transportation a number of years ago, I, I followed a gentleman by the name of David Scribner. Many of you in this chamber probably recognize that name. Uh, the, the good chair of the Transportation Committee was Mr. Tolles, and I do say that with all due respect, he's a good friend of mine. Mr. Scribner was known as the anti-Tolles. He stood a few rows up in front of me and spoke out against Tolles, but he did speak for this constitutional lockbox. And my good chairman friend on the other side of the aisle of Transportation agreed with Mr. Scribner on the lockbox. And so various iterations of that lockbox has come before this chamber for over the last few years. And I dare say, if you read the quotes of the governor, and I've had conversations with him, I believe the governor likes our lockbox better than the majority's, with all due respect. I think if you take a look at the language, it follows what the governor wants us to do. It follows what the people of the state want us to do. When the income tax was passed many years ago, we were promised, and the, our electorate voted on, a constitutional spending cap. We're still waiting for that to be passed. As a result of not having a constitutional lockbox, over 100 and, I'm not great at math, but it looks like over $140 million have been swept in the last 14 years from the Transportation Fund swept away. Most recently, $76.5 million in 2014. My friends in this chamber, we have a spending problem. And so what I would ask you to do is take a look at the proposed constitutional amendment. This resolution protects the money going in and protects the money coming out. It is a true lockbox. It is the lockbox that we were asked to look at and pass. Please take a look at both of them. Just give me a look, a couple minutes, and let's do what the electorate have asked us to do. Let's spend their money wisely and on what it's meant to be spent on. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker.